for Unitronics. Today we're going to discuss and explore controller communications of the Unitronics VFDs, how that's easy to do. And again, I invite any questions. Uh, please post them in the question window. And with that said, I'm going to start with two questions of my own. So I'm going to open up the polling uh, window and launch two questions, one at a time. So right now I'm asking everyone to select about their use of Unitronics products. Do they use Unitronics all the time, most of the time? Never, not very much. Voting is still going on. I'll give it another few moments here. And then I'll ask you a second question. And your reply to these questions help me gear the webinar uh, to suit your needs. All right. So it's, it's sort of split about using Unitronics. Um, about half of the group uses Unitronics most of the time, and the other half of the group, not much, not very much. So let me close this question and go to our next question. And specifically, I'm asking about your experience with VFDs in general. They don't have to be Unitronics VFDs, but VFDs in general. I do appreciate your responses. Another few moments here. And this time the responses are, are uh, roughly split into thirds, whereas um, a little less than one third of the group are very experienced with VFDs. Another third is somewhat experienced, and the remaining third has a small amount of experience with VFDs. So very good, very good. Thank you very much. I'm going to close this poll and continue uh, with the uh, webinar. Thank you. Oops, there we go. So just a, a brief introduction to Unitronics, if uh, you do not know who we are. Uh, Unitronics is a global organization. We were founded in 1989. Our headquarters is in Israel, but we provide support, sales, and service all over the world. Many of you probably know that we have award-winning uh, PLC and HMI hardware and control products, along with award-winning software to be employed while using our PLCs, HMIs, and control products. More recently, over the last few years, we added variable frequency drives to our product lineup. And then about two years ago, we brought on servo motion products. Today's webinar is going to focus on our VFDs, and how to control and communicate with the Unitronics VFDs. From the picture on your screen, you can see that in 1989, we started with our first PLC HMI product, the M310. And then over the years, we've developed uh, various PLC controls and HMIs. And that really is firmly planted in our DNA. But most recently, back in 2019, uh, we had a uh, request uh, for VFD products. And so we introduced our VFD, it's called the UMI, the Unitronics Motion Inverter. And then more recently, uh, we developed the Unistream PLC and our servo motion 
products. So with that said, uh, as you know uh, from listening, I'm referring to a VFD or what's known as uh, a variable frequency drive. Uh, others might call it a drive, a VFD, or an inverter. So I typically tend to use the word VFD. And when I say that, you'll know what I'm talking about. Applications for VFDs, um, simply put, on the highest level, whenever you have something that is rotating, you could potentially use a motor, an AC motor, and then that motor can be controlled with a VFD. Some of the common applications include conveyors and packaging, material handling, types of applications, printing. We also have a wide range of customers involved in fans and HVAC industries, along with pumps of various sizes and compressors and filling equipment. So the best use of a VFD, you might want to say this is best practice. Uh, on the right side of your screen are our four largest markets for VFD products. Pumps, HVAC, conveyors, and packaging equipment. And to use a VFD, you need an AC motor. That AC motor should be induction rated and it should be a three-phase motor. The VFDs work most properly when you have an induction-rated three-phase AC motor. Again, another best practice for using VFDs is when there is no need for precise positioning. If you have an application with a motor and you need to control positioning plus or minus a tenth of a degree, uh, plus or minus one degree, something very precise, then you're better off using a servo motor product. But if you have an application like a conveyor or a pump where there is no need for precise positioning, a VFD is a good choice. Our VFDs from Unitronics are going to be open loop. There is, we do not offer any VFD at this time that offers position feedback to the VFD. I call that open loop. And what we can do with employing the Unitronics PLC products, you can bring position feedback to the PLC, and I will call that a semi-closed loop or partially closed loop. And that is because of the scan times and reading the logic of the PLC, you're not going to get precise positioning, but you will get uh, directional positioning and uh, be able to stop um, you know, within a certain number of degrees if need be. But mostly, I would say 95% of our applications for VFDs are used in an open loop situation. Another best practice for using VFDs would be when you want to reduce your power consumption. The VFD, in essence, is variable frequency. So you can vary the speed of the motor and also you can vary the torque of the motor. And so in times where you do not have 100% demand, you can reduce the speed or reduce the torque that the motor is producing, and therefore you're going to reduce your power consumption. Many people use a soft start or an on-off switch with an electric motor, and that typically is just like the light switch in your house. It's either on or off. 
so the motor is running at full speed or not running at all. But with a VFD, you can vary that speed. So you can run it at 10% of maximum speed or 20% or 50%, et cetera, et cetera. And this is very helpful when there's not so much demand, there's less demand on the pump or the fan or the conveyor, and you can reduce the speed or reduce the torque and thus save power. Before we dig into communications, I, I just want to take a moment and point out that all of the Unitronics VFDs are UL, CUL, and or CE certified. All of our VFDs currently have Modbus RTU as their communication protocol. And all of our VFDs are IP20 rated. In addition to that, we have many VFDs that include a dual channel safe torque off circuit, a TUV certified dual channel STO is available on many of our VFDs. That is a very popular option for Europe and Asia, and it is growing in popularity in the United States. When it comes to control and communication with our VFDs, we have two basic schemes of communication. We have what you see on the left side of your screen, a standalone VFD. And this is a VFD that is connected to the motor. And then to the VFD, you would supply your power and then program the parameters using the keypad located on the VFD. That is a standalone option that is available with all of our VFDs. On the right side of our screen is what I call an integrated control and communication scheme. And that is where you might be controlling multiple PLCs and sensors and relays and whatnot. And you're doing that with a PLC. So the PLC can be connected to the VFDs, which then are connected to the motors and the PLC is talking and controlling the VFDs. We're going to dive in a little deeper. First, we're going to get into the integrated control scheme. But before I do that, I would like to share with you and ask you to reply to this next question that is now on your screen. I'm simply asking that when you control a VFD, are you using a PLC or are you using it standalone? So basically, are you using a PLC or some type of controller? And it looks like the majority of attendees do use some type of a PLC or controller. I'll just give it another moment here. If anyone's thinking hasn't registered their response yet. Okay, very good. So the majority of the attendees today use a controller or a PLC most of the time. About 15% use a PLC all the time, and then the remainder some of the time, and then another 15% never use a PLC or a controller. So thank you for your responses. I'm going to close the poll and carry on with the webinar. So let's dive in to using the Unilogic software from Unitronics that 
controls the Unistream family of PLCs and controllers. We're going to look at a, a Unilogic example for PLC ladder logic. And in essence, the message that I want to deliver is that within a few clicks, you can be up and running, connected and moving the VFD using the software. For those of you who are not familiar, if you go to unitronics.com and you should end up on our landing page that looks like this. This is our home page. There we go. And if you then move over to products, you will see all the products that we have listed here. And if you move over to software and go to Unilogic and click there, that will take you to the landing page for the Unilogic for Unistream. Yeah, there's a pop-up window. I'm sure that can be disabled on your end. If you need to download the latest version of Unilogic, that is this button here. And if you scroll down a little further on the page, lots of good information about the features, advantages, and benefits of Unilogic. There is a video that you can watch to become more familiar with Unilogic. And then at the bottom, or towards the bottom of the screen, there is a box here that says Unilogic examples. And you can click here to download the examples. It is a zip file that you can unzip and install. And that is what I'm going to show you next. I have an example. Let's see if I can bring it up here. There we go. Very good. So here we are. We're magically involved or into the Unilogic software. And to get there, I clicked on project and clicked on open. And then I selected a software example called Uni7 Unitronics VFD Advanced. And this is what you see here. There's the uh, left screen is the Solution Explorer, or the left side of the screen. In the center is where all the magic happens in the ladder logic. And then on the right side, you have your toolbox with all of your function blocks for multiple purposes. What we're going to do now is, since I'm using an example software that is uh, predetermined and developed for you, I want to confirm that the hardware configuration is correct for the PLC that I'm using. So under hardware configuration, I click on the arrow, and then I can see the controller model that is set up in this software example is a USP series 070. And if I click on that, you will see a picture. Now, let's just say I want to change that to the Unistream PLC series. So I can change the current PLC model very easily. And then under model family, I'm going to pick PLC, and it gives me the basic the standard or the pro models. I'm going to pick pro, which is a USC B10 or E10, if you're using EtherCAT or can open. And I am going to change my PLC model. Do I want to continue? Yes. After today's webinar, you should receive an email with a copy of this webinar um, available to you. So uh, if you do miss some of the details, you'll get a copy of the webinar that you can then uh, replay at your convenience, uh, share amongst your colleagues. So here we are. We have changed the PLC model to uh, the uh, Unistream PLC. And next, I want to confirm the I.O. 
that we need for this example. And there we go. By clicking on UniIO and UniCom or communication, I can see on the left side of the PLC, we have our RS-485 Modbus RTU communication slice. And on the right side of the screen, we have some IO for different needs. Let's see, this one is an analog IO for analogs in, uh, two analogs out. And then this one is a um, high speed unit uh, digital IO that's available, pulse width modulation, et cetera, et cetera. If you go to the toolbox on the right side, you can see all the different modules that are available for this Unistream PLC. So after I confirm that the controller is correct and the IO is correct, I want to confirm the parameters of the VFD. So if I click, if I go down and click on VFD, and then VFD number one, that is the VFD that I have connected to my, excuse me, yes, that is the VFD I have connected to my PLC. And our VFD part numbers start with the letters UMI, a Unitronics Motion Inverter. This is an E-B1. Using communication channel, the RS-485 communication port. And I do need to confirm the configurations of the VFD. So this is where I can easily set the parameters of the VFD. This is where I can control all these different parameter topics very easily using this screen. We do provide what we call fast configuration. This is predetermined in the example, and it is uh, a starting point of the parameters uh, that you can use for your VFD. So instead of programming the VFD through the keypad, we are programming the VFD through the Unilogic software. And if I wanted to change something, one of the parameters, I can see the configured value column. Next to that would be the minimal accepted value for that parameter. And then to the right of that would be the maximum accepted value for that parameter. What the default value is, and then the units of measurement. So let's take a look at parameter 00, zero decimal zero 03. And that is the maximum output frequency. That is currently set at 50 hertz. The minimum value is 50 hertz. The maximum value is 630 hertz. If I want to change, all I need to do is click, put my number in, and hit enter. And that then will update the VFD when we compile the software and download it to the VFD and to the PLC. As you can see here, this is part of the fast configuration. If you have a need to change any of the other details, you have all of the different categories of VFDs on the left here. And then you can go in and change whatever is needed. There, there are hundreds of different parameters that can be changed. Let's look at P05 input terminals, and you'll find uh, a wide range of parameters here. Uh, it starts at P00, a P05 decimal 00, and goes all the way up to P05 decimal 54. And again, by clicking on the configured value column, you can change whatever parameter is needed.
if you change a parameter but you weren't quite sure what parameter did change, the first choice here under configurations is modify parameters. And by clicking on that, I can see what parameters I might have changed since starting this software configuration. So we looks like I clicked on speed control mode, uh, run command channel, frequency command selection. And you can see the default values in this column and the configured values have not changed except for maximum output frequency where I did enter 400. The min and the max are shown here and the default value is 50. So I know now that my controller is correct. I know that my IO and communication modules are selected properly. I have selected the correct VFD and I've set the correct parameters in the configuration. If I scroll down under ladder module one, you will see the different routines of my ladder logic. So basic parameters are in this chapter, and this is where we write the basic parameters to the VFD. I'm not going to dive deeply into all these parameters. You can take a look at them by downloading the example software on your own. And please note that the Unilogic software is available from our website. That is available no charge to our customers, as are the examples. Again, that is done at no charge in order to best support your needs and our hardware. Here is the ladder for the configuration chapter of the ladder logic where we're loading, writing, reading, and storing different configurations. As you can see, it, it can get uh, complex, but it's very easy to understand what's going on. The help window is always available to you by pressing the F1 key on your keypad and then searching for the parameter and getting more detailed information. Here are some motion parameter, chapter of the ladder, et cetera, et cetera. Torque control. So this is the software. This is the ladder, the logic that's going to do what you want it to do. It's going to operate your VFD the way you want it to operate. And these can be modified. You do not have to use our examples, but they are provided for your convenience. Next up, in looking at Unilogic for the VFD, I'm going to go to the HMI section of our software. And under module one, I have the multiple screens that are used for the HMI control of the VFD and the PLC. So I can choose the different uh, categories of menus. Here we have an auto tune menu, basic configuration. So again, by compiling this software, downloading it to your PLC and the HMI, you can control the VFD very easily. And you have a wide range of parameters that can be controlled if needed. I have seen Unilogic used with only one basic screen, and I have seen it uh, used for VFDs using multiple, uh, a dozen or so screens. So it looks like we have 10 screens here. And just picking one, 
Uh, here is the frequency control screen for the HMI, and you can um, change the parameters once it's all compiled up and running. So this here is, is a somewhat simplified overview of the Unilogic software to work with a Unitronics VFD. I'm going to go back to my main presentation. And again, we review the integrated control using Unitronics PLC to control the Unitronics VFDs. And within a few clicks, you are up and running. The next section in the webinar, I would like to, uh, excuse me, I would like to discuss standalone control of the Unitronics VFDs. So you would communicate directly to the VFD and you can do that a few different ways. You can enter your parameters directly on the keypad to the VFD. It might be tedious at first if you have many parameters to change, but once they are set um, and if they do not need changing in the future, then that's a wise investment. We also have as an option our replicator keypad. This is a keypad that has a copy and paste function. You can set your parameters in the keypad, and then if perhaps you are an OEM and you are programming multiple VFDs per shift, you can use the replicator keypad to easily download those parameters. And then finally, coming soon, will be the Unitronics UMI workshop software. So we'll, uh, we'll dive into this in a, in a little bit here. Uh, next screen shows the replicator keypads and the uh, RS uh, uh, or RJ45 cable that connects to the VFD. Again, these keypads have a copy and paste function, so you can set your parameters, save them, and then download them to your VFD. Very simple to use. If you don't need the replicator keypad, you could just use the keypad that is on the VFD itself. And then finally, for standalone control and communication of your VFDs, coming soon, we will be introducing the UMI workshop software. And that is where you can set all your parameters in one screen and then download them to the VFD uh, over and over again if needed. Uh, very helpful for OEMs that are programming a large number of VFDs. So we will communicate to the attendees today when this UMI workshop software is available. Stay tuned. So at this point, the first portion of the webinar is concluded. That is the simple VFD communication portion of the webinar. I will stop and ask you if you have any questions on the materials that have been presented so far. You can just type them into the questions box and uh, we'll take a look at them. I'll pause a moment here. If you'd like to stay tuned, um, and if you would like to learn more about our VFD products, the details and specifications of our products, uh, please stay connected, and I'll be covering that portion uh, of the material um, in a few seconds here. Let's see. So we do have a question from Baxter. Are there any other communication protocols available on the VFDs? And at this time, we only offer Modbus RTU as a standard catalog communication protocol. We are working to develop 
a few different communication protocols uh, which should be introduced, uh, I would say sometime in 2023. Uh, if you were to ask me, I would say the first half of this year. If you were to ask the engineers, they might say it would happen in the second half of the year. But it is something on our roadmap, and it is something we're working on. So if you needed to communicate uh, Ethernet IP, for example, uh, that is coming. Um, let's see. What else? Another question. Um, can the PLC communication module be used for other RTU instruments? And uh, the answer is most likely, not a perfect answer, but yes, it can be used for other RTU instruments. I do not have any experience doing that, um, but um, RTU, Modbus RTU is RTU and it, and it should uh, work correctly. Uh, there, there are some, um, configurations in the communication module uh, that have different um, values of the RTU, different parity settings and whatnot. Um, so I guess the devil is in the detail. What other types of instruments are you speaking about? And then uh, there will be an email address provided to you later in the webinar where you can send the specifics to our support team and get a specific answer. But in general, I would say yes. All right. Yes, we will be sending, uh, the question is, will we upload this video somewhere? We will, we are recording the webinar and a copy will be sent to you via email. Um, and then most likely it will be uploaded to the Unitronics PLC YouTube channel. All right, good questions. Thank you very much. Much appreciate them. There is a technical question regarding the scope trace option. So the scope trace is a built-in function block or feature of the Unilogic software where you can trace the commanded function versus the uh, absolute or real function and have that scoped out for you uh, very uh, cleanly on the HMI. So if you're commanding it to run at a certain torque or certain speed, you can see what the command value is, and you can see what the actual value is. That's uh, very, very helpful, having the scope trace. And there's a question here about the Unilogic software support uh, programming and SCL. So, um, I do know that we have an option for ladder logic and writing in C. And both options have uh, um, pluses and minuses. And so there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, I'm not certain about SCL. Uh, I would have to refer you to our support group so um, there you go. And again, the email for our support group will be coming up at the end of the webinar. Uh, last but not least, can you use the digital speed selection uh, via the terminal for standalone applications? So uh, yes, you can program uh, digital uh, speed control uh, that when a certain circuit is made or, uh, it, you know, using the IO on board of the VFD, uh, you can control the speed. So, excellent, excellent. Uh, moving on, I, I'd like to talk about some of the product details and specifications of the Unitronics VFDs. So here's a busy screen to look at. Uh, it, it's in general, Unitronics offers 48 different models of VFDs. 
all of our models right now are IP20 rated. And they start at a 0.4 kilowatt, four tenths of a kilowatt, and we go all the way up to 110 kilowatts of power. So that's one half horsepower up to 150 horsepower. That's in the catalog. You can pick a part number and receive a quote uh, very easily in that power range. Uh, we have VFDs that operate on 200 to 240 single phase, 200 to 243 phase. We also have 380 to 440 and 380 to 480 three phase in our catalog. All of them will have a combination of UL and or CE certification. And then there's a selection of VFDs that are available with the dual channel STO. If you look in the middle, you see the different horsepower ratings, and then across the top, the different power input ratings. And if there is an X in the box, that VFD is available with CE, but without UL. So here you see a 20 horsepower at uh, rated to 440 volts AC three phase. This would be for our European and Asian customers. It has CE certification, but not UL. All the plus marks are units that come with the UL, CUL, and CE certification. And if it is shown in red, those units have the dual channel STO that is TUV certified. Again, details are available in the catalog. Now is a good time to tell you that if you need something that you don't see on this chart, let's talk. Here's the global sales emails for Unitronics. And if you can send us your requirements, we'd be happy to work with you to see if we can develop a VFD to meet your needs. For instance, I had a customer come to us last month and needed a 250 horsepower VFD. Working with our engineers and the customer, we were able to provide him with a price and availability for that product that is not in the catalog, but we were still able to provide it to him. We have recently worked with OEM customers that are shipping VFD units or their product that includes our VFD. They are shipping them to Canada and they needed a VFD that is rated to 575 volts AC three phase. And yes, we were able to supply that different horsepower ratings, uh, but it was rated to 575 volts AC. So again, if you need something that you don't see in our catalog, please reach out to us via email and we'd be happy to take a look at it for you. Part numbering, um, in essence, I'm gonna dive into some of the weeds here. What's important about our part numbering uh, to me or for this webinar are the last three characters. So that's going to sh determine the specification. So you can take our VFDs and break them into three groups, the E-B1, and those are available with these specifications and it has the safe torque off circuit. If you have a VFD part number that ends in U-B1, you will have these specifications, but no STO circuit. And also with the U-B5, you will have these specifications, but no STO circuit. So the, the VFDs typically come with internal braking units and EMC filters, depending upon the horsepower that's needed. Again, they are an IP20 rating. 
This screen shows you the different controls. You're able to control speed and torque. You could do that using Modbus, analog, digital, PID, or Pulse. The communication with any PLC is done with Modbus RTU. There's analog and digital inputs. Again, depending upon the series, will determine the number of I.O., whether it's analog or digital inputs or analog or digital outputs. And then there's also relay outputs um, internal to the VFDs. And this is all included in the specifications and catalog guide. Mounting options for the EB1 and UB1. You can typically mount it using a DIN rail that you see in the picture in the center. You can also mount it using the flange on the back of the VFD. The B5 units are only available with flange mounting. There is no DIN rail mounting for the B UB5 units. When we reviewed the Unilogic software, we talked about the different parameters that can be controlled. These are the high level chapters of parameters and then you can drill down and there's hundreds of different parameters that you can control. Again, it's important to note the Modbus RTU field bus at this time. The operating temperature is a pretty broad range. The VFDs from Unitronics can operate from 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. I apologize for my European guests. I don't have that written in Celsius here, but it is available in the catalog. And the different mounting options, internal EMC filters. Again, just reviewing some of the features and benefits of the Unitronics VFDs. We do offer a few different options or accessories. We have the external keypad. Uh, you can buy it as a standard keypad or a copy and paste keypad. We have flange mounting plates, uh, input filters, braking resistors. And coming up to the conclusion of the webinar, don't go yet, but uh, I do want to tell you uh, we have a fairly complete inventory of VFDs in stock in Israel from uh, one horsepower to 15 horsepower. So we can typically ship or we typically ship from our inventory orders for one to 15 horsepower. Anything above that, uh, the inventory varies and we would um, either provide it uh, from our warehouse in Israel or our warehouse in Boston, Massachusetts. If we need to order it from the factory, uh, there would be a manufacturing schedule that would have to be quoted, but please, um, again, let me know what you need and I'd be happy to work on uh, a formal quotation and delivery for you. Please remember the simple wiring and controls. RS-485 is just a simple two-wire communication. You can use our PLCs with a PL, excuse me, you can use our VFDs with a PLC or standalone. And of course, you can control speed or torque of the motor. So on this page, uh, please note my email address and then the global and USA sales email address. You can send technical questions to myself or to global or USA sales. We'd be happy to respond. We do offer, again, the Unilogic software at no charge. The software templates or examples are at no charge. Uh, we have award-winning outstanding tech support that are that is available uh, to all of our customers. 
And I'd like to think that we also offer outstanding sales support. So please uh, communicate with me your needs, and I'd be happy to connect you to the right person uh, or, or respond directly to you with answers to your questions. With that said, I, I again ask for any questions. Uh, if you want to put them into the question box, I do have two final questions for you that I'm going to share. The uh, first question is, was this webinar valuable? Uh, please be honest. Um, with your feedback, we're able to make better product with better deliveries and better support. We'll just give it another second or two, and then I'll share my final question. And then hopefully in the next uh, 48 to 72 hours, you'll receive an email with a copy of the recording. Uh, let's see if there's any questions in the box. Um, any noise issues for VHF radios or LED lights? Ah, so um, yes, there's there's potential for noise issues. And that is one of the main reasons why we supply input filters um, for, the, for the power going into the VFD. And then uh, using uh, connecting from the VFD to the motor, uh, there is wiring specifications in the user guide uh, that we ask you to follow. If you have proper shielding and proper grounding, you should not have noise issues. But again, that we can't control how they're installed. So um, we do ask that you follow the installation instructions uh, to prevent noise. And our last question, if you would like any additional information from Unitronics about our VFDs, uh, please uh, let us know. We'll contact you as best we can. And just moving back one slide, you see the email addresses. So wherever you are in the world, please send us an email and we would be happy to reply. And with that all said, the uh, I want to thank you for your time and your attention. Um, the, the webinar is, is uh, formally closed at this point. Um, it, I will stay on if there's any other questions. So uh, again, thank you for attending. Have a great uh, afternoon, evening, or the rest of your day. All right, let's see. Uh, to all of you who wrote a note of thanks, you are very welcome. Yeah, I, I thank you for your time and attention. And uh, I'm glad that uh, most of you found this to be valuable. And if you go to unitronics.com on the web, uh, you'll be able to see all of our products in their entirety. There's a couple questions here regarding setting different speeds with the digital I.O. Uh, those will have to take offline and, and get a response for you. I, I don't want to uh, mislead you uh, with my response. So we'll, we'll respond to you personally with that. Okay. Well, thanks again. Uh, this concludes the webinar, and uh, again, have a, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.